All right, what's going on, big dogs? SG Leo here. In today's video, Bud Light partners with Dylan Mulvaney and the internet absolutely explodes. So sit back, relax, and let's dig into this. All right, you guys. So Anheuser-Busch, the maker of the beer brand Bud Light, has officially partnered with a transgender individual named Dylan Mulvaney. Now, the reason for their entire collaboration was to celebrate Dylan Mulvaney making it an entire year as being a woman. Okay, so Dylan Mulvaney, for those of you who don't know, used to be a dude. He now thinks he is a woman and has spent the last year now parading around the United States as a woman and basically being, in my opinion, a complete mockery of women like everything he does is just really stereotypical woman. So for instance, in the ad that he did or in the showcase he did that he got the sponsorship from Bud Light, uh, talked about how March Madness was going on and that he had no idea what March Madness was because of course women are just stupid and don't know anything about sports at all, right? Everything this guy, woman, whatever you wish to call him, her, is very just stereotypical woman and it comes off as very demeaning to me it comes off as very offensive to women if you were to ask me personally uh, but Bud Light decided to sponsor them and as a result Bud Light's Bud Light stock prices dipped really hard and there has been a mass protest all over the internet of people boycotting Bud Light and even as a person myself I'm a I, I like Bush Light Bush Light is my kind of go-to just casual drinking beer like if I'm at a bar with some friends and whatever, and Bush Light is owned by Anheuser Bush. So I've been kind of switching off of Bush for a long time now. I've been uh, drinking a lot of uh, Shinerbach, which is a Texas-based company, and I really I really enjoy Shinerbach beers. So when they announced this and a bunch of people are boycotting it, as somebody who will go to the liquor store maybe once a month and buy a 12-pack, I'm not a huge drinker, so even I, this other this other day here, went into my local liquor store, and everything else is being bought except for Bud Light and Anheuser-Busch products, so maybe it's just the area I'm in, but I've been seeing it all over TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, in cities that you wouldn't imagine there being a lot of conservative individuals in are outright protesting and just not buying Bud Light, and as a result, a lot of their tank, a lot of their stock has tanked, and so the price of their company has taken quite a hit, and this has caused a lot of people to kind of give their opinions on this whole issue, and I don't have like a set opinion on it other than why are we politicizing absolutely everything that to me is the real message here why do we have to politicize everything in this country i don't understand it man like anheuser bush bud light is a beer that tastes like ditch water okay most of the beers they produce aren't the greatest right they're the beer that anheuser bush produces is simply a beer that you just drink casually or you drink for the specific fact that it's cheaper and it's going to get you drunk. It's a party beer. Bush Light, Bud Light. Budweiser is probably their more heavy brand where you maybe have one or two at a bar. But but for a vast majority of their products, it's just a normal like subpar beer that you only drink to get drunk or have at a party because it's cheap, right? That's That's the whole point in a ton of their products. So a lot of people who buy their beer are conservative or like conservative college students or party students. People aren't buying your beer because of your political alignment, right? I don't go to Walmart because I think the owners of Walmart or I think the brand of Walmart is conservative or liberal. I go to Walmart because it's cheap, right? Because they have the things I need at a pretty decent price most of the time. I just can't believe they would do this and then act surprised at the backlash they got. You know, it'd be like like the NHL, for instance, just kind of went through the same thing where they were trying to do pride nights for every team. And yet, if you did a poll, I would bet 85% of hockey fans are conservative white people because that's just the kind of crowd that they draw. That's just the kind of people that enjoy hockey, I guess. You know, I don't know why that is. I can't give you a number on why that is or a study on why that is. But from all evidence given, it's a pretty conservative-based fan base for the NHL and for hockey as a whole. 
So they ended up dumping that and a bunch of people got mad, but the NHL didn't see any numbers get hit because guess what? The people who support the LGBTQ plus divided side and multiplication comma asterisk team or whatever they want to call themselves, they don't watch hockey anyways. So, and and doing a pride night wasn't going to immediately make all these transgenders and gay people start watching hockey. Just because the NFL or the NHL or the MLB or, or any of these major corporations, just because they do something that is pro-gay or pro-trans or something like that, that doesn't automatically mean you're going to start getting a bunch of trans, queer, gay people to come and start buying and enjoying your product. That's not how this works. And so that was my big confusion with this whole ordeal was that Bud Light is now just flabbergasted at the fact that their stock price tanked and that nobody's buying their beer anymore. And it's like when you politicize a product, right? If you're going to politicize a product, you better know the fan base to which you're politicizing it to. And by that, I mean, if you're Nike, for instance, Nike has a very big grip on the sports world and almost everybody buys it. So if they want to do a pro LGBTQ stuff and pro Muslim or Jewish and you name it, it's probably not going to harm anything to them because so many people already just constantly buy their shit, right? But when it comes to like lower tier beers like Bud Light, most people who are buying that are not of the LGBTQ plus agenda. They're not. So when you are then forcing the opposite opinion or the opposite political party onto your fans, you can't be surprised when your stock dips. Now, there was a weird thing that came out. Apparently, the CEO or the CFO, one of those two, had said that this was like a marketing ordeal that they didn't approve of. And then they retracted that statement. They did a whole ordeal on Fox News where they said that they were just trying to reach a more wide audience, I guess, like a more vast audience. But to that, I got to say, you're already one of the best selling beers in America. Why? What what else are you trying to do? Anheuser-Busch is legitimately the biggest beer distributor in the entire United States. They already sell to absolutely everybody. They have no competition. They really don't. Like, who are they scared of? Coors? Coors? Really? Like, Coors is a popular beer, but it doesn't even touch the numbers that Bud Light and Bush Light and Budweiser and all these major brands push because that's what people have grown up drinking and watch their parents. And it's just something that, you know, if you're somebody who likes to have a beer once in a while, you probably sit back and think, oh, well, I grew up watching my dad drink this or my mom or my uncle or somebody. And so I just started doing it because that's what it was around. And now I like it. That's that's just how it is. Most of Anheuser-Busch's beers are an acquired taste, if I can say that, right? They're not... You're not going out of your way because you're like, fuck yeah, Budweiser. You know what I mean? So for them to do this was just really odd for me. And I say again, I, I'm really sick of all these brands just pushing politics into everything. Like, I don't care. Okay, so as somebody who I, I obviously enjoy politics to an extent. So if I want to listen to politics, I'll turn on my podcasts or I'll turn on the news or I'll turn on a YouTube video about politics, right? But that's when I'm feeling like dealing with politics, okay? I also am a working person who can work anywhere from a normal eight-hour day all the way up to a 16-hour day, depending on what jobs I have to get done in a day. And my job is very physical. So a lot of the times when I come home, I don't want to deal with politics. I've already had a stressful day. I don't care about what's going on in the world right now. I just want to sit down, play a few games with my friends or watch a few episodes of South Park or whatever TV show I'm binging at the time, and then just go to bed. That's really all I want to do. And for a vast, vast majority of Americans and just people in general, most people don't care. Okay. And this is the part where I am really starting to be drawn or not drawn, but torn apart by our political state right now, because it just seems like Both parties are sitting there saying, you need to do something to show that you support us or you just don't support us, which is ridiculous because as a political party, if you need somebody to openly voice their opinion for you all the time, you're doing something wrong. Okay, that's stupid. You should be doing things that just make people go, yeah, I think they're doing well. And that's it. That's that's really all you should be doing. 
But for whatever reason, both sides want you to like openly voice your opinion all the time. And if you're not like keeping tabs on both political parties and all the stupid shit they do on a consistent basis, you're like a traitor or uh, or, or like an idiot for not paying attention to constant politics. When the reality is a very large chunk of Americans just want to be left the fuck alone and just don't want to pay a shitload of money for everything. That's really what they care about. They care about like their their housing price, you know, taxes, making sure that they live in like a safe town or city and that they have enough money to put food on the table and can support themselves and their family. That that's really the core concepts that most people care about. And then we have beer companies like this showing up and just being like, "Oh, we know you just had a hard day at work, but here's our pride can." So now you have to look at that when you get home. And again, if this was already a company that widely supports this kind of stuff and it's just openly like this beer brand was specifically made for gays or whatever. Okay, that's their marketing. That's like their thing. But this is Bud Light. This beer's been around forever. And legitimately every year, this company puts out the most pro-conservative, pro-American advertisements every goddamn year. Just to all of a sudden be like, okay, we want to have trans people drink our beer, even though literally zero of them drink our beer. And even after we do this, zero of them are going to drink our beer again. They might try it once because we have this really popular influencer try it, but that's it. It's not that great. But like Anheuser-Busch, Bud Light isn't that great. I'm sorry, it's not. It's piss water. That's really what it is. Like, I'm pretty sure I can make a better beer at my house. I I just really didn't get this whole political move. No matter what your thoughts are, I think we can just all agree that like politics as a whole really needs to just get put to the side when it comes to all this shit, man. I'm just getting so sick of everything being like a political event. You know, first it was sports, then it was TV shows and all sorts of other media aspects. And now they're just throwing it into beer too, I guess. Like, I don't get it, man. Most people just want to be left alone at the end of the day, but... I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think about this whole situation down below. If you did enjoy this video, remember, please leave a like, comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, guys. It really does mean a lot to me, and it really helps the channel grow and allows me to continue doing this. And hopefully one day I can do this a lot more and get more videos out to you guys throughout the week. So, But anyways, guys, thank you for your time, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Have a good night, guys. I lost my best friend to 23. She left her body in Harvard about me.